Okay. Save our badges. Stop the okay. All right, well, welcome everyone. Here we are. My birthday today, of all days, but I've been working for 10 years in the environment's wildlife conservation sector in Bourne Free in the Badger Trust where I used to be CEO. And those 10 years I spent fighting this crazy, cruel policy. Wouldn't you agree that there is no justification for the horrible Badger cult to continue, yes? Yes! yes! And obviously we've seen a lot of Prime Ministers when it comes to this policy. It was started under David Cameron. It was continued under Theresa May. Mr Johnson intervened in the Badger cult under pressure from his wife, Carrie Johnson, who I'd known and worked with. But we never stopped the policy other than a temporary removal of licenses in Derbyshire. And now we have another Prime Minister on the way. And they're both in this building behind me at the moment, putting their case. Rishi Sunak, the former Chancellor, and Liz Truss, the current Foreign Secretary and former Deputy Secretary, who I've met in that building to discuss this policy. I must say, as I said on social media this morning, I don't think she's the most charismatic or capable politician, but if they choose to make a Prime Minister, good luck. But the one thing about Miss Truss is that obviously she understands this issue. She was responsible for it. And I will say this to both of those candidates in there at the moment. The Badger Call policy has failed. Firstly, it's failed because it's extremely cruel. The vast majority of the 170,000 badgers have been slaughtered since 2013 are by a so-called controlled shooting method that could take up to five minutes for those animals to die of organ loss and blood failure. Do any of us feel that's justified? No! no. Secondly, as we know from the peer-reviewed research that Tom Langton, Mark Jones and Ian McGill have worked tirelessly on and published recently in the Vet Record using DEFRA's own data looking at all the key periods for the coal policy and the errors it was carried out over those years that we're looking back on. There is no, no evidence to show that culling is having any more of an impact on lowering bovine TB than areas that are not cold. And that's scientific data peer-reviewed. Wouldn't you agree that is the final nail in the coffin for this policy? Yes! And if that's not enough for you, bearing in mind this country is in an economic meltdown with 10% inflation, huge deficits, huge debts, and people finding it very hard to pay for food or heating, they have spent this government, these ministers, this government here behind you, over £100 million killing 170,000 badgers. Do you not think that £100 million could be better spent in our economy? Would yes, you agree? Yes, yes. There is no justification on cost grounds. There is no justification on effectivity grounds. And there's no cost justification on humaneness grounds to continue this insane policy. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! Now we are at a crucial moment in this fight. We could see more badger call licenses issued in the next few weeks. And despite promises from the government this coal policy will end, there's little evidence that that will be the case. Yes, four-year licences will come to a close, but there is a policy of allowing reactive culling where they consider there are outbreaks where they want to blame badgers for those outbreaks. And there is no certainty that culling licence won't be issued for another five, ten years. Do any of you think that's acceptable? No! So we might see 200, we might see 250,000 of these protected species killed over the next few years. That's the biggest disruption of a protected species ever carried out in this country and it could push that species to the verge of extinction in areas where it's inhabited since the Ice Age. Do any of you think that's acceptable? No! It's cruel, costly and insane. And it's the canary in the coal mine when it comes to protecting the future of our natural environment and wildlife. We cannot farm in such a way where we pollute the environment, we're cruel to animals, we inflict diseases on wildlife, and then we kill the wildlife as a consequence. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yes. We've got to find better ways of farming. We've got to find better ways of looking after our countryside and our wildlife for this generation and generations to come. I fought this policy for 10 years. I'll probably go on fighting it for another 10 years. But I hope at some point this insanity will come to an end. I want to thank Mary Barton. What an amazing campaigner. Year in, year out, come rain, snow or heat wave, she's been outside these buildings. Let's have a round of applause for her. Yeah. And Chris Wood as well, Hearts Middlesex Badger Group, tireless campaigner. And everyone here 
from the badger protection community because you've been there on the marches up and down towns and cities in this country. You've been there for the debates in Parliament. You've been there for the protests outside of this building. And let's thank Tom Langton who can't be with us. Let's thank Mark Jones who can't be with us. Let's thank Ian McGill that can't be with us because they have worked tirelessly to get that peer review data published. And that is critical for ending this insane, cruel policy. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! We will finish this. We will end it. And when we do end it, let's hope it's a lesson to everyone in the future that you should not blame a an animal like the badger for the mistakes we're making in our farming and agriculture system. You should not demonise it and you should not destroy it. There's no justification for it and we will end it. We will stop it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stop the car!